before they come in or is that there specifically to frame that entryway? Well, normally, so in this case, the rug is really small because that entry was had rounded walls. It, you know, when you're staging, um, we're not always uh, customizing rugs to fat, you know, to fit the uh, the area, right? So mm -hmm. we had to use a smaller rug, and we would normally use a bigger one. So we do try to frame the, the door, frame the space, and we do try to walk in two steps on the rug. So I don't know if you've ever walked in a house in the winter and you take a step into the, the house and your feet are wet, you're full of snow and you're like, where do I go? You just stop dead right on that rug. So yeah. there is a little psychology into that where let, we want people to feel comfortable the minute they walk in. So we do really normally want them to walk two steps on the rug, move aside, let the next person move in. So mm -hmm. there's this whole awkward entry when you're showing a house right there at the door. So yeah. we try to remove it. And sometimes you can do it as easily as with just a rug. So. Yeah, 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 great. That's what I was thinking. And uh, yeah, I mean, this entryway just looks so much different stage. We're gonna uh, move on to the great room and see what exactly Margaret did with the great room and why I think this, it just makes such a huge difference when you're selling a property because it gives people a chance to visualize what this is so take a look at this great room now guys this is after it was staged and i have some ideas i think about why you use certain things and did certain things but give us a little insight as to not only the furniture but the bookcases of uh, you know and some other things well, what was really important in this and in the luxury market is that the scale is right. So you need to put, or we need to put furniture in that not only will this particular buyer um, um, relate to. So if you put things that are too small, out of scale, not expensive enough, uh, you know, the quality isn't there, you're, you, we can cheapen this property. So we can either elevate, support the number, or we could not do just the opposite. So here we did use these sofas. They're, they're expensive sofas. They're very large. They're 100 inches long. They're very restoration hardware-y looking. Yeah. Um, and then um, even our coffee table, it's huge. It's a four foot square. So it was really important to use the proper scale. Um, we are very neutral in our, in our um, staging. I like to say it's quiet. We like to be quiet. We're not trying to overpower. We're not trying to say, look at me, I'm the staging. So we're really not trying to let the buyer come in and focus on the staging. We really want them to focus on the windows, on the mantle, on the, you know, the, all the, uh, the features that are there. So we are uh, removing an objection to say, where does my couch go? Where does yeah. my this, go? where does my that go? We're showing them so that conversation doesn't even come up. It becomes about the property itself. So all we're doing here is showing the potential of what a buyer could do. So yeah. um, people uh, on an empty room, this room was ginormous. So yes. really when we put this furniture in, it gave it proper scale that brought it in. And, you know, before you, if you saw it empty, your eye went up. So now your eye is staying a little bit lower. It is drawing you into the room. So it really does multiple things. Yeah, room. the first thing I saw when I looked at this room was the oversized furniture because it has to be. This room is so big and so huge. When you walk in, Dylan, with no furniture in there, I mean, there's an echo in this room. <laughs> you, you know, the funny thing, Larry, is I look at the after picture is, and, and Margaret, you made a great point about bringing your eye down. Like the thing I couldn't look away from in the before picture was that TV um, over the uh, mantle. And you can't even tell it's there. Like it, 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 it's an afterthought in the after photo, no pun intended. Right. The other thing you see here is you see the light fixture. So we are very like just the placement of the coffee table. Your eye goes there because your eye still goes to the little things, right? Still goes to the color, but then your eye will travel upward. So it uh, there is like, uh, the, you know, it's not, it's yellow brick road in the sky. So it, it's like a, the way your eye takes in color things, objects. So we watch where we bounce things around the realm and where we want it to move. So this helps the seller like feature
future items. So like, you know, that's what happens here. Your eye starts low, but it travels up. I see a light fixture. I eventually see the TV here, but I don't see it right away. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even just placing things on the, uh, in the bookcases and stuff, it just, it just gives it a lived in feeling without making it feel staged. That's what I really like about what you do. It doesn't feel staged. It feels like, you know, this is how someone would live here. Well, that is part of our goal. So staging has really evolved over time. So it used to be very kitschy. You'd see little wine bottles here. You'd see, you know, uh, uh, just the props all over. So really now it has evolved, especially in the luxury market. It shouldn't look staged. It should look like it relates to the buyer. It should look real. So yeah. um, there is a whole era that it didn't look real. So that's the difference between working with a regular stager and a luxury stager. So if you're yeah. selling luxury properties, not you, you need the right stager to fit the- 100%, 100%, you know, so that, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, you've got to work with somebody that understands, like Margaret and her partner and her whole team does, understands how to stage these types of property properties and but margaret you also stage bread and butter properties too because yeah. that's important as well yeah yeah we probably stage more in the, our average listing right now is 1.2 million it, it fluctuates from one one to one two sometimes it goes a little bit higher but that means we're doing a lot in the five six seven hundred thousand dollar range yeah. uh, we're doing you know three four five million dollar homes uh probably i'd say the biggest difference is is that not anyone can do the luxury but many people can do a you know five hundred thousand dollar house yeah so uh it just makes it easy for us so our five hundred thousand dollar houses look like a million bucks so yeah we invested millions of dollars into our, our our inventory so in our furniture that we use so we're not uh you know we're, we're a little more designer the way uh, that the way this market is going uh and you know we talked about this on the last show dylan you know prices went up 3.4 percent uh year over year end of october yeah. so um or month over month excuse me uh end of october so it's not going to be long before a million dollar listing is going to be a bread and butter listing it used to be four hundred thousand, and right. it's just you know it's just crazy how the how pricing has evolved yeah, the and they're not going people. down no matter what people say. we're not going down we're not going down so let's uh let's keep this rolling here and so yeah i mean this room looks 